Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to talk about congenital hand anomalies. I'm Professor Amr Abrook, Professor of Plastic and Maxillofacial Surgery. The intended learning outcomes by the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the embryology of the upper limb, enumerate the different hand anomalies, know the commonest, and know the management of the commonest hand anomaly. Embryology of the upper limb, the congenital anomalies affects 1 to 2% of newborns and approximately 10% of these children have got upper extremity abnormalities. Congenital limb anomalies are second only to congenital heart disease in the incidence of birth malformations. Here are some signaling pathways during embryogenesis, where the signal center, we have got the epical ectodermal ridge, the zone of polarizing activity, and WNT pathway. Each has got a responsible substance and action and a resultant anomaly. The epical ectodermal ridge, the responsible substance of the vibro plus growth factor, its action is proximal to distal limb development and interdigital necrosis. His deficiency causes transverse deficiency, whereas the zone of polarizing activity, the responsible substance is the sonic hedgehog protein. Its action, its radio ulnar limb formation. Anomaly, it's the mirror hand. Whereas the WNT pathway, it's a transcription factor, ventral and dorsal limb axis. Whereas the anomaly is the nail patella syndrome, abnormal nail and bulb arrangement. Why do you classify the hand anomalies? To speak with each other the same language, to have reports transported between us, to document data, manage protocols for the management of these anomalies, and to follow up. The Swanson International Society for Hand Surgery, its appearance on appearance relying on knowledge available in the 60s and 70s, it's ideally a classification of congenital hand anomalies would be based on etiology, with such a classification indication the site in the molecular pathway and or in the anatomical site in the limb bot at which the aberration occurs and one which also is indicative of the timing of the costive disruption. One, its failure of formation of parts, either transverse or longitudinal. Two, its failure of differentiation or separation of parts. Three, duplication of parts. Four, overgrowth of parts. Five, undergrowth of parts. Six, congenital constriction bands. And seven, generalized skeletal abnormalities. Number one, disorders of formation, transverse and longitudinal arrest. Transverse at the level, transhumeral level, at the elbow, at the forearm level, and at the wrist carpal level, or even at the metacarpal level, symbrachidactly, or intercalated fomomelia. Longitudinal radial and ulnar and central deficiency, radial hypoplasia or aplasia. As shown in the figure, by Bine and Kluck classification of radial longitudinal deficiency. One, its late appearance of radial distal epiphysis. Two, you have got a small radius with proximal and distal epiphysis. Three, we have got a small proximal radius. And four, complete radial aplasia. Central deficiency, typical cleft hand. Men's classification of cleft hand. Number one, normal web. Number two, a mildly narrowed web. Two, b severely narrowed web. Number three, a syndactylized web. And four, a merged web index trace suppressed. Whereas five, absent web ulnar rays only present. Ulnar hypoplasia or aplasia by classified the ulnar longitudinal deficiency into 
four stages under hypoplasia, partial under aplasia, total under aplasia, radio humeral synostosis, as shown here. Congenital hand three disorders of formation, the most common in the thumb hypoplasia, where in this photo we have got moles of the right hand in six children with the five classic types of thumb hypoplasia are displayed. Type three has been subclassified into two categories with 3A and 3B, and type four is often called the pounds flotant or floating thumb. Type 1 thumb hypoplasia as shown in the photo and in the x-ray. The skeletal x-ray is well segmented and may be short. All intrinsic and extrinsic muscles are intact and the first web space narrowing is minimal to moderate. Type 2 thumb hypoplasia, moderate, minimal to moderate shortening of the skeletal x-ray or bones are present and ligaments at the metacarpophalangeal joint may be lax. The ulnar innervated intrinsic muscles and the median innervated intrinsic muscles are very weak. Anomalous anatomy is common. Type 3 a thumb hypoplasia, severe thumb hypoplasia. These thumbs exhibit more severe skeletal hypoplasia, including the carpal bones. Median nerve innervated thumb intrinsic muscles are severely hypoplastic or absent, and the ulnar innervated muscles are present but very weak. Extrinsic tendons are abnormal. The first web space is small, and the metacarpophalangeal joint is unstable. The carpometacarpal joint and the thumb metacarpal are intact in three A thumbs. Type 3B thumb hypoplasia is severe. The median innervated thinner intrinsic muscles are absent entirely. There is severe hypoplasia of the abductor pollicis, flexor pollicis, lateral head, and the ulnar origin of the Vector indices. The carpal metacarpal joint articulation of the proximal metacarpal is absent. Flexor and extensor extrinsic tenders are severely hypoplastic or even absent. Type 4 thumb hypoplasia floating thumb. The hypoplastic thumb is attached to the hand only by a soft tissue bridge which contains a neurovascular structures and rarely hypoplastic tendons and fascia. There is no skeletal connection. Type 5 thumb hypoplasia, aplasia, with complete aplasia, no thumb structures are present. In approximately half of these patients, the radius is normal. The trapezium, trapezoid, and scaphoid are oven, hypoplastic, and a strong first abductor indices. Type 6, central deficiencies, cleft hands, and symbrachydactyly. This is a photo of a typical cleft hand. Thump in typical cleft hand, three layers of median innervated intrinsic muscles are present in most typical cleft hands. Commonly, the index ray is joined to the thumb by a simple syndactyly, or degrees of absence of the long rays may present. The thumb are smaller than normal 
and the longer the thumbs with flexion contractures are tri-phalangeal. Type 6b, same brachydactyly, a typical cleft. The broader thumb and the fifth rays are the most complete in this hand. Thinner and hypothenar muscles are present, but often very small. Central digits are represented by hypoplastic nappens. There are all degrees of metacarpal hypoplasia within the central three rays of the hand. A very wide range of variations is actually present in these hands. Symbrachidactly type 6b. Type 7, which is called the constriction ring syndrome, or in other names, Streeter's dysplasia, or more commonly amniotic band sequence, is the condition that can affect one or all limbs and less commonly the face. Its simple constriction rings, which may be partial or circumferential constriction rings with distal deformity, with or without concomitant lymphedema, acrosyndactly, that's to say distal fusion and fenestrated syndactly, or even up to the level of amputations. Type 8, five-fingered hand. Five-fingered hand, in the five-fingered hand, the normal complement of median innervated thinner muscles are absent. First dorsal interosseous, volar interosseous, and lumbrical muscles are present in this ray, which anatomically is a finger, not a thumb. The clinical appearance preoperative shows that the patient had tried to flex and autopronate this ray to become a thumb. Type 9, radial polydactyly, we'll talk about later. Type 10, syndromic short skeletal thumb prey. It's type short skeletal where the thumb is short with or without radial clinodactyly is seen in many syndromes. The primary osseous abnormality are usually seen at the proximal phalangeal joint level. The median and ulnar innervated thoracic muscles are present and very hypertrophied. Extrinsic and intrinsic flexors and extensors are normal up to the pharyngeal level. Disorders of differentiation and duplication, either soft tissue or skeletal, synostosis. Syndactly, it's an isolated. Syndactly is a common congenital anomaly of the hand with an incidence of approximately one every 2,000. It occurs bilaterally in 50% of cases. Between 10 and 40% of patients have got a positive family history that is inherited as autosomal dominant trait. Variable expression and incomplete penetrance account for the male predominance, 2 to 1, and the variable phenotype within a family pedigree. Syndactly is described as complete if the web space extends to include the finger tip. Here is the case of simple and complete syndactly between the third and fourth rays. Where else it may be considered or described as incomplete when the web space occurs anywhere between the normal commissure and the fingertips. Simple syndactyly has got only skin or soft tissue connections. The bifurcation of the common digital structures may be distal to the normal level of the web. Complex syndactyly is marked by skeletal anomalies. Distal synostosis is usually affected as synonychia with the loss of paronychial fold and flattening of the nail matrix across the bony mass. Complex complicated syndactyly are those with accessory phalanges or digits 
interposed within the abnormal web space, the incidence of tendon and neurovascular abnormalities actually increases with the complexity of the syndactyly. And here is an X-ray of a complex syndactyly with fusion of adjacent phalanges. Also, I've got polydactyly, which can occur on the pre-axial radial or post-axial ulnar side of the limb. Post-axial polydactyly is frequently inherited in a autosomal dominant pattern, but has a variable penetrance pattern. It's more common in Africans and African Americans and can be bilateral. Here's a case with bilateral post-axial polydactyly. Post-axial polydactyly in chondroectodermal dysplasia or Ellis van Creveld syndrome, the dorsal views shows and demonstrates the characteristics of nail aplasia. This is a photo of a one-year-old with bilateral post-axial polydactyly. A ligature clip has been placed at the base of amputation and residual nothing after suture ligation of a post-axial polydactyly. This is Wessel type 4. Mirror hand is a rare congenital anomaly characterized by symmetric duplication of the limb in the midline. Typically, there is a central digit and three digits on each side that represent the middle ring and small digits in mirrored symmetry. Despite the seven digits, the sum is absent. Within the forearm, there are two ulni and no radius. The ulni support the duplicated ulnar carpal elements. The duplicated ulna has led to the term ulnar dimelia. There are many variants, however, that complicate classification treatment the notation that mirror hand is a spectrum that culminates in exceedingly rare anomaly of multiple hands have been presented. Here's the trifalangeal thumb. Please read about it and we'll talk about it later. Come to Dactly. It's a congenital contracture in the antro posterior direction of the PIP joint. It occurs as a consequence of anatomical imbalance of the extrinsic and anomalous insertions of intrinsics to the affected finger or fingers. Camptodactyly can be sporadic without previous family history. Family history cases can inherit in an autosomal dominant pattern. In about 30% of the cases, Camptodactyly has got a familial background. The fifth finger is the most affected in most cases, i.e. more than 70% of cases, followed by the fourth finger, less than 20% of cases. Clearodactyly is reserved for radio ulnar deviations in the hand and lateral medial deviations in the foot. Macrodactyly, macrodactyly of the middle finger and ring finger in photo one, macrodactyly of the index finger in photo number two, syndactyly and macrodactyly may coexist together as shown in photo three, and Photo number four shows the radiograph of the syndactyly and macrodactyly all together. Macrodactyly classified as type one gigantism and lipofibromatosis, where macrodactyly associated with enlarged fat infiltrated and nerves and within the digits and extended proximally through the carpal tunnel most common form of macrodactyly deformity. Type 2, 
gigantism and neurofibromatosis. Macrodactyly occurs in conjunction with plexiform type of neurofibromatosis, often bilateral, maybe osteochondral masses associated with the enlarged skeleton. Type 3 gigantism and additional hyperostosis. Hyperostosis form of macrodactyly with osteochondral periarticular masses developing in infancy. No significant nerve enlargement. Very rare and not in hereditary pattern. The digits are nodular and stiff, and there may be other skeletal anomalies. Whereas type 4 gigantism and hemihypertrophy, it's a very rare anomaly without a known inheritance pattern or etiology. It's a part of hemihypertrophy where all digits are involved, but less severe than type 1 or 2. Deformity marked by intrinsic muscle hypertrophy or abnormal intrinsic muscle anatomy. Deformity is present with flexion contracture, ulnar deviation or adducted thumb deformity. Here's some titles that we'll discuss in self-learning, macrodactyly, brachydactyly, brachymetacarpia, clinodactyly, symbrachydactyly, constriction band syndrome, generalized skeletal anomalies, other skeletal anomalies. Please do know all the most commonest and the management of the commonest in these congenital anomalies of the hand. Thank you.